I'm incredibly passionate about cows because cows enable me to become the person that I wanted to be and that I am now, both professionally and as well as, as personally. So I joined Kaust in 2011, back when Kaust was just two years old, and was the start of a great, uh, of a great adventure. Uh, Kaust enabled me to become the person that I wanted to be because it uh, gave me the professional means and the private means to pursue interests that I had beyond, beyond work. So I'll start by talking a little bit about my profession, as that's probably what people are most interested in. Right now, I am an account manager for Term Official Scientific. Uh, what this means is that I'm involved in sales, uh, which is connecting solutions that a company offers to the, pre, uh, to the people that need those solutions. And you might wonder, how does one go from having a bachelor of chemistry in the University of Rome to uh, going into sales that is usually an unorthodox, an unusual career choice? And um, I have to, thanks, uh, to thank Kaus for that, as I always knew that my path, my career was one that was meant to be in science, but not necessarily in research. This is because there's much more to science than what we're usually uh, led to believe in terms of research. There's many functions, many more worlds and, and universes that uh, orbitate uh, around this. And I knew that I wanted to go in the business side uh, of science. Now, the way Kaus enabled me to do that was that it exposed me to opportunities such as being part of an entrepreneurship workshops and working with entrepreneurship center. It uh, allowed me to be part uh, of the student council. And uh, it, during my time, this must probably 2015, I was a member of the student council. And as part of that, I was uh, uh, leading the international business relation committee. And my goal was to create bridges, connections to the companies that uh, work with cows, companies that work for cows, and companies that are seeking scientific uh, graduates. During my time in the business relations committee, I had a chance to uh, travel in different countries, uh, most often in Dubai, to connect to companies that were uh, interested in hiring our graduates, convincing them to come to the career fair, and then also organizing the career fair through student ambassadors that would then welcome uh, companies and their representatives to tour cows, get to know their graduates and understand which profiles would be better suited for, for careers that were open, not only in, in the region, but also uh, globally. And this was a great experience for me as it allowed me to uh, develop my leadership skills and also test whether uh, this was a world that I really wanted to, to be part in. And I'm, I'm very happy about uh, this experience. Uh, and Leah, you said the opportunities that arose. And I want to clarify that opportunities arise all the time, but it's most important when you can create your own opportunities. In that regard, I believe that chaos is a catalyst for change meaning you can go into cows and just go a very standard research experience, but you're not taking full advantage of what cows has to offer to you. When you go to cows, when you are admitted to cows, you're entering a very brilliant ecosystem in terms of people, in terms of opportunities, in terms of resources. Make the most of it when you do your research. You have access to incredible facilities. You have access to incredible collaborations all over the world. Do network actively. Get to be known in your environment. Get to know people who are active in your profession or in the profession that you want to, uh, to, uh, to aspire to. In addition to that, take a chance to volunteer in the many different activities that CAUS has to offer. Get a chance to be in the student council, get a chance to be in the career fair, get a chance to work with the entrepreneurship center or in the many different uh, student led and community led organizations for your hobbies in private life. And this is with regards to your professional life, but also your private life is incredibly exciting, as I believe that everybody who comes to cows that gets admitted to cows that even just thinks of applying to cows is a special kind of person. I think we, the people that, the Kaustians, we are risk takers, we are ambitious, we are open-minded, 
we're agents of, of change. And uh, it's just incredible. The, probably the most beautiful thing that Kaos has donated me is, is the, the alumni network that I have now all over the world. When I go traveling, whenever I go to a new country, I will actively check my LinkedIn, check my Facebook and see who do I know who lives there. And chances are after almost now 10 years of uh, cows in Saudi Arabia that I do know somebody. And these are just brilliant people. I'm thankful for each and every one of those friendships that be they professional or private. And I will now give the word back to Liam. <laughs> Well, Philip, thank you for setting the scene and just two incredible comments uh, that you made before we move to Melissa that I want to reiterate to uh, our prospective students listening in. Kaust made you the person that you've become. I mean, that's yep. extraordinary. And uh, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, and also what this session is all about, networking matters, uh, the invaluable networks that you made as a grad student that 10 years on, you're still engaged with. So thank you for that, Philip. I'm now going to hand over to Melissa. And Melissa, you came to KAUST uh, from the US. And how was your transition to Saudi Arabia, to KAUST as an international student from the United States? What was that transition like, uh, both in terms of moving to another country but also in undertaking grad studies as an international student and a woman in science. Uh, thank you, Lee. Um, yeah, the transition from the US to Saudi Arabia was interesting because when I decided that I wanted to go to Saudi Arabia, it was questioned by a lot of people that I know. Um, the way that the Middle East has been portrayed in the media and the types of relationships that the U.S. has with the Middle East may, made that um, kind of scary, especially for my parents. Um, but I had been traveling ever since I left after my high school graduation. So I was basically away from my hometown ever since going to college and identifying scuba diving and marine science as like my passion. Um, the Red Sea is what really intrigued me to go study at KAUST. And I actually started there through the VSRP. So I had an internship that introduced me to life at KAUST before I actually committed to the grad program, which was really helpful. And I would definitely suggest taking advantage of that. If you're even just thinking about doing grad school in general, um, that's exactly what that program is meant to do. Introduce you to research, introduce you to life after undergrad, which is a lot of just studying and memorizing and test taking. Um, grad school is very different from that. So getting an introduction to that is really important before you dive straight into a, a grad program. Mm -hmm. um, but Kaus really made that transition really easy uh, and actually made all of my other international travel look very complex, even just traveling for fun, because Kaus set up the way to, to secure your visa, had all the medical situation taken care of, had everything paid for. Once you arrive at the airport in Jeddah, you have basically a personal chauffeur take you from the airport to Kaus and tell you exactly how things are going to go. There's no questioning, no doubts. It's It would be scary if you didn't have that, especially for somebody who's never traveled to the Middle East before. Um, but once you arrive, there's this big cow sign at the airport and you just know that you're in the right place. Um, and then you get you get taken through security and you don't have to worry if you don't speak Arabic because there's somebody there that's going to help you through everything. And once you arrive at the campus, um, you start off working with uh, your housing. So you get to find out that you get a beautiful apartment. And when I first moved into Kaust for my internship, I was located right on the Red Sea. So it was basically looking out into the potential that I would be studying from both my internship and then later my master's program. So the transition from the US to Saudi was made really easy through Kaust. And I really appreciate that because everything I've done since then, um, especially my most recent trip to Australia to start my PhD, the visa process and the onboarding process there was not as um, seamless as what KAUST provided. And so I really appreciated that. 
And then as a woman in science, um, I think coming from the US, coming from a program in school, marine science was typically dominated by women. And even though when I came to KAUST, I was actually a part of a lab that was majority of students were American. So that made me feel even more comfortable just because I had people that understood the cultural background I was coming from and who also understood what it was like to study in the US as well. Um, but because there was so many connections between my lab and all the other international labs that were at KAUST studying marine science, it was very easy for me to find my way into friend groups and collaborations with other students that came from all over the around the world. And um, without KAUST, I don't think I would be as prone to wanting to make friends from other countries. And so now I'm much more open to the idea of having a global friendship. And it's crazy because you can basically look at the map after attending KAUST and you could find your friends on every continent almost. So it's amazing to know that wherever you go in the world, you're gonna probably run into somebody that has went to KAUST, collaborated with somebody at KAUST, or just knows that network. And that has been amazing for me so far. I think I was just speaking to one of my friends who's also in a KAUST alum, and I was just telling him that from day one, my appreciation for KAUST and my awareness of what KAUST actually provided me has just grown. So even after my graduation, I every single day I'm now like, wow, KAUST was really important. The KAUST was an amazing opportunity for me. And I just realize that more and more every single day, even though I'm not at KAUST right now. Um, and that's been great having the Alumni Affairs Network connect us all as well. So. Yeah, that's that's a bit of my story. I hope that helps those prospective students out there. That's fantastic, Melissa. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm going to move on to Dunya now. Uh, what was your experience as a PhD student? And are you still learning with or from KAUST? So as a PhD student, I had a really interesting experience when I joined. Uh, I came from a completely engineering management background and they had a very shy experience into science or fundamental science project or product. Uh, coming to KAUS, I was going completely for a material scientist and obviously many people doubted that, that uh, decision and they were telling me how challenging it will be to move completely from an engineering background to a science background. Well, I was up the challenge, coming to Kaos, coming to Saudi Arabia, completely changing my track of, of studies um, was challenging enough for me to come and take the trip and, and try my luck. Um, the beginning wasn't very smooth. It was bumpy. So uh, for students who are expecting a completely smooth, pink story of a PhD, uh, it is not like that. It is very challenging, but very rewarding. And we have to keep that in mind because it's such a self-discovery experience where you kind of like know that you really have no limits on to running over your goals and achieving your, your dreams, basically. So I came here, I knew I was wanting to work in solar energy um, as a very shy or small young scientist, I didn't know how vague solar energy is. So when I came, I was a bit lost. I didn't know what um, really uh, field I want to work in. I joined the lab, things didn't work out because I was not feeling fulfilled. And that point of my life obviously was very scary because I was feeling alone. I was thinking that that's the end of my dreams, but house actually allowed me to find myself and to find the dream and to point out the dream I was looking for exactly. I had a support group, both for my colleagues, uh, my friends, people who were senior in PhD. So they told me that it was okay. And I feel like at that point, this is exactly what I needed, that, that support from people who have been through it, who have felt the same limitations and challenges and maybe felt like now they cannot do it. And, obviously the support from the teachers and the professors and the staff because they allowed me to go through every professor and ask them about what their subjects are and I had the ability to do research and kind of like get information about the different fields in solar energy because I was not sure which kind of solar energy I want to work in and that's how I found out exactly what my destiny I would say 
is. Um, I definitely developed a lot of interest in solar energy and solar cells in particular. I joined the new group, which completely was a new start from cows. And I can tell that from there, I knew I could do it no matter what. And that was very um, inspiring throughout my colleagues, my support network, the professors in house. They helped me find who am I now. And basically they just built this career from scratch. And um, I think that gave me really the opportunity to completely challenge myself in something new and to succeed. Uh, well, after my PhD, I can tell you that the career I choose for myself in Kaos is the one because I'm continuing doing exactly well, well, the same, basically the same field. I'm still working on the perovskite solar cells, which is my expertise, but now I'm actually having the opportunity to build a complete lab from scratch. Um, and this is really amazing opportunity for me because I'm basically taking Kaos as a role model and I'm bringing everything I learned from cows to actually build the first laboratory that will be uh, responsible on building solar cells from scratch in Morocco. And um, obviously cows, without cows, without the support of the, my alumni network, I wouldn't be able to do that. How is that? Well, when you are a scientist, you rarely notice the details of the equipment you are using. So you are more like a user. So you just go there and do your experiments and get your results and move on. But when you wanna build a lab, well, those little details you don't care about as a scientist become very important because you need to know the brand, the characteristics of each equipment, which equipment work with what, how they do the maintenance and everything you were not carefully looking at when you were a scientist, where Thanks to my network back in Kaos, my professors, I was able to gather all this information. They helped me uh, through the databases that Kaos is using, their collaborations, their contact lists. Uh, my professors helped me, my research scientists in my previous lab helped me. So this is something that seems very easy to do, but you need without obviously a big support group of people you cannot gather enough information to actually start something completely from scratch. Um, am I still learning from cows? Always. I think every day. Um, I always take cows as a role model of what I want to do in my lab. So in terms of obviously the safety, the maintenance, the scheduling, everything um, I do is, is basically inspired from cows and how organized the labs are and the students and the training and everything else. But I'm also trying to uh, diversify my knowledge a little bit more. So I'm taking uh, obviously advantage of all the training cows is offering. Uh, the last event I have been through uh, was just in January, a couple of months ago, I joined the entrepreneurship for all program. It was an intensive two weeks, I would say that, and having a, a full-time job, that was not easy, but I was determined to do that. And obviously, cows allow us to, well, give us the chance to learn even more and develop our career. Uh, the two weeks were amazing. They just um, evolved my skills in management, leadership, entrepreneurship even more, and they just give me that taste or that uh, push and encouragement for me to start diversifying my knowledge uh, a bit in addition to science and research, which is my passion to think a lot uh, about entrepreneurship too, and maybe starting a startup very soon. Fantastic. Dunya, thank you so much. Uh, now, Ahmed, uh, on to you. Your journey with KAUST has been long. Uh, you completed your master's and PhD. Uh, in the spirit of this discussion on networking, over that time at KAUST, how did your professional networks grow? And in your role now with RPD Innovations, are you still in touch, engaged with the professional develop the professional networks you've developed as a student? Well, thank you very much, Leah. Thanks everyone for the opportunity. It's actually always an honor to be back and reconnect with the alumni, with the potential students, and uh, all the colleagues we have in KAUST. So. Uh, as you mentioned, I've had a very rewarding journey during my master's and my PhD. Uh, I've also been working toward the establishing of a startup where networking was a big thing out of it. So uh, I really believe that the most connected people are often the, the most uh, successful. So when you invest in your relationships, professional and personal, 
it will pay back. It, it's going to pay back throughout the course of your career and your personal life. So um, in my personal experience, I believe that Cal students are empowered and encouraged to attend key international events from the first day they join CAUST. They go to conferences, they are uh, always pushed to participate in internships in universities and international companies. So these kinds of opportunities put students out of their comfort zone. And that makes them interact with leaders, with experts, uh, with peers who will be in the future working on uh, several places around the world and definitely they will be great contact in the future. So networking in these events teaches you how to properly interact with others and the obtained contacts could be very useful throughout your career. So without that kind of support from KAUST, uh, like in my business of commercialization, like even though I have a PhD, uh, I like what Philip is doing. We do heavy, uh, hardcore sales. We, we need to reach out to decision makers. We need to reach out to R&D centers to offer our services and before we can get into the execution. So building contacts, leveraging contact is very important. And the trigger of that skill that maybe I might have today was coming from KAUST. So uh, in my current position as a chief technologist in uh, the, uh, it's a national technology commercialization firm, I, I always feel decision-making uh, challenges that require consultation about best practices and, just give you an example, in a recent occasion, just a few weeks ago, I was able to reach to an international expert from the industry that I've met in KAUST during an event when I was working toward establishing the startup company. So I just added that person and linked it years later. The information I obtained from that expert were very helpful. And actually at the same time, we found a common ground and we are discussing potential collaboration between their firm and our company, RPD Innovation. So, and, and beyond that, not only in the academic side, in KAUST, I was always pushed by my advisor to initiate communications with uh, private funding agencies, with vendors, tool suppliers, maintenance engineers, and many other support entities. And I still keep the contact info for those, for those individuals. Uh, I've dealt with them before. I got the opportunity to deal with them again. Um, I found several of those contacts very helpful throughout the execution of, of, uh, of, of uh, my projects. I was able to create an opportunity or resolve problems. Uh, so yeah, networking is very helpful. I leveraged a lot of them when I was in Cal's and I'm, I continue uh, doing that. I know time is very tight, but I just want to leave uh, uh, the audience with a few tips uh, if, if they are in an event or a networking uh, uh, place. So the first tip that I always mention to, uh, to, to, to my team, just talk. So when the, the most, it's the most important part of networking, talking. There are many brilliant people, they meet other brilliant people, but someone has to trigger the conversation. So don't wait for other people to approach you or start the conversation. Be the one who try to get to people to talk and get to know you. And also always be ready, have your information ready. So once you feel that, that you have a connection, you have a chemistry with that person, you should ideally exchange information, exchange physical or digital business cards these days, and uh, which is actually much easier. But most important after that is following up. I, uh, I have a habit that whenever I meet a person, I try to find him in LinkedIn, I just add him. So, add people to LinkedIn, leverage social media, and don't forget following up with people. Uh, the last tip that I always, uh, actually my father uh, who came from the banking industry and he appreciates the, the power of networking and he always mentioned that. Uh, connection is very important, but always give back to people before you ask for help. You cannot just go and approach your contact and approach people asking for a favor but you don't give favors to others. So uh, this is a very nice gesture from people when you have, when you establish such contacts, be uh, available to other, to help others, you will definitely get the support back, but don't be afraid to ask favor or support from your network. It's going to make your life much, much easier. So yeah, that's, that's all I have from my side and I'll be happy if there are any questions to take after work. Fantastic. Well, our host doesn't, oh, there she is. Hello, Tisha. Well, that was an incredible 
set of advice from each one of you. So Philip, Melissa, Junior, Ahmed, thank you so much. Uh, your experiences at KAUST weren't only uh, enriched uh, when you were a student. Each of you is a very active contributor uh, to life after KAUST uh, since you graduated. And so I'm most appreciative of your time. Thank you. And Tisha, over to you. Thank you so much, Lee. And yes, thank you to all of our panelists so much. Um, I think Dr. Ahmed, you gave us some great final advice and hopefully our listeners will take that advice and log into their LinkedIn and find all of you so that way they can start connecting. Uh, because as the title of this session says, networking matters. So I hope that you learned a few tips here. Um, you saw that our connections at KAUS not only start with you here, here in our KAUST open house, but they continue on after you graduate and you leave us to achieve greatness within the world. We're here to support you. Um, again, thank you all for joining us. For those of you listening, please, you have an hour left of the virtual event. So go ahead head, visit the exhibit hall, um, ask your questions to live representatives. And in the meantime, everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night. Thank you.